Guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Ratatatata TNG, which is actually uh, RTG, who is a German Terran. Upper right-hand corner, we have Ciudadu, aka Zeti, and he is a Peruvian Zerg player. I am not familiar with either of these guys, but I am familiar with this map because this is old-school Blue Storm, which you have a no rampless natural expansion, which is fairly wide. A lot of players complain about this because of its old-schoolness. A kind of an interesting gap right here where where basically you can flood in zerglings and marines and smaller units not siege tanks i don't think vultures fit through there as well and then you have a mineral only exposed natural expansion where you have this ramp right here oftentimes and then this is kind of the other interesting map feature you have kakuru everywhere but you have kind of this wide middle ramp right here where players can really have some interesting battles because of the high ground low ground dynamic and this is a two-player map Looks like RTG is going ahead and setting up a supply depot on his front door to get that wall in. And this is BSL Season 12 first match. Hasu League Group A. I actually wanted to start with Chobo League this time, but I couldn't find the replays to do it. I actually asked in Caster Chat. Also, wanted to give a huge shout out to two new patrons I've got. I've got uh, Sefti and Christian. Hopefully I pronounced Sefti correct. Uh, Christian, hope you're having a good morning workout. As I understand, that is typically when these are listened to. Appreciate all you guys and all of the other patrons I have. I know I still have 80s mullet as a patron. I know ES Navi's still out there. Uh, a handful of other people who's... If I, I should actually keep... A, I should give shout outs there more often, but I digress. We saw the drone cancellation trick. We are seeing it looks like, I think, an overpool. Yeah, an overpool to get some zerglings. Zerglings can be very, very annoying on this map early and provide a lot of map control. Opposite corner, we do see that barracks being placed on that front door. No gas just yet, so it looks like it's going to, well, we'll see what happens here. SCV Scout making its way up into Seattle. I'll have to remember this is Zeti. Uh, Zeti going up. So information may be denied here because we do have the full grouping, actually eight Zerglings being produced. So very aggressive early Zergling play, but we are gonna see a hatchery after this. And perhaps this is because there is such a wide open natural expansion. Ignoring the SCV scout just wants to get pressure on that front door. So the Marine's going to spawn here. And we'll see how well the Marine... I think this is going to force some SCV pulls. We'll see. Second supply depot. Close near the barracks. The Overlord making its way across. Marine stalwartly waiting for the attack. Another Zergling. Sorry, two Zerglings being produced in the background. So it's just six. Looks like it is just six. Two being kept back to deal with things otherwise. Working on that supply depot, there are two Marines working on those Zerglings, and the Zerglings going to back off otherwise. And this is a very, yeah, you can see the lack of gas leading into a command center early for Zeti. He wants to go ahead and try to take his natural expansion. I'm a little bit concerned about this play, though, because this is a very wide open natural, and you have that little bit of a gap there. So basically, you need a good amount of ground. You, basically, you need map control, a little bit of map control, to kind of push into this natural expansion. And we are seeing a lot of Zerglings for TNG comparatively. So I'm wondering if this command center is going to be built and just kind of floated and otherwise that natural expansion is still going to be denied because of lower marine counts early in the game and a decent amount of zerglings on the ground to try to deny it. More zerglings flooding out. Looks like that this zergling got that first SCV kill. We do see an extractor and a push to lair. So I think this originally was played in a little bit of a AFK drone. Wake up drone, start mining, do your job. I'm sure that'll be taken care of in a moment. This is, it's kind of interesting seeing the crash of meta between these two eras, because this was definitely at the height of three hatch Zerg play. I think both in PVZ and uh, TVZ, both directions. And now the meta is definitely more towards layer tech and kind of going two hatch layer. Either two hatch lurker, oftentimes two hatch spire is the more popular build. We do see a creep colony preventatively being created. The Marines moving out, getting two Zergling kills. And actually, the commands are going to be floated out as a result. The rest of those Zerglings... Was that all? Did I just miss a big battle in the front? I'm tempted to rewind. Yeah, I just missed a bunch of Zerglings being AFK and being walked out against. And the Marines wiping them out. Overlord taking a little bit of hit as well. Two additional Zerglings now waking up and moving around a little bit. So it looks like worked out for TNG. Zeddy didn't produce any additional Zerglings. He's going to be able to take his natural expansion. I still feel like this is one of those areas where you might want to build some additional stuff or... I don't know. Get something out defen uh, defensively just in case. Engineering Bay, second barracks, 
in that back corner. We do have Stim being researched as well. Zergling's trying to chase down this Marine, or sorry, this SCV to prevent scouting. That Sutton Colony should be able to take care of it on that back corner, but we see a Spire. So we're seeing very typical kind of current meta. SCV doesn't get into the main. It does see that second extractor being built and a lot of Marines moving out, even without medic support upon seeing that single Sutton Colony. And I think this is going to be enough timing where they can just slip through the gap and this sunk colony is not going to cut. Oh man, he's pausing though. If he had just gone in right now, actually might've been able to do a lot of damage even without the medics. And yeah, he's going to try to sneak to that back line. If he can just move behind here. Yeah, he's going to be able to nice. Going to be able to deny TNG a lot or sorry, going to be able to deny Zeddy. Keep, I think might be mixing up uh, the players here. Might be able to deny at least the gas, but a lot of mining. So second Sutton Colony's up. There is a lot of gas in the bank, though, to get those five Mutalisks in the air. And without medic support and kind of this cliffside edge, these Marines can be taken out, so this might very rapidly swing the other direction in Zeddy's favor. We'll see. Because here's the Mutalisks being produced. That's going to be six Mutalisks in the air. That's these Marines gone. There are two turrets here, but this is a very exposed natural uh, from the lower corner. You have these medic and Marines going to try to provide some defense otherwise. There is that bunker up comparatively that overlord moving out and the main i still don't see any turrets and there's only still two barracks producing so losing these marines at the natural expansion will hurt and even though there was a bit of disruption of mining here i'm a little bit concerned about the turnaround we'll see so mutilus up in the air a handful of zerglings as well the zerglings dying grouping up so that marines are that marine grouping taken care of i'm looking for the turrets actually in the main so there's some turrets on that corner. Also, yeah, there is that turret above, but I still feel like there's an angle here on that lower barracks. And the Mutalisks making their way across. It looks like Zeddy is going to wander up. Go ahead and take that 12 o'clock location as a follow-up. Single Zergling popping through that. I almost want to call this a ramp, but through that gap. Three turrets, kind of a de defensive situation. Oftentimes what you'd see is the Mutalisks come in on that lower corner, though. The, the one thing, though, is, is when you're going across this large area you have to be careful that the marines don't kind of scoop down here you have an exit route now moving in engaging two turrets from the north and it looks like because zeddy is not taking that back right approach and is a little bit fearful to go in and perhaps strand his mutalisks he is uh going to end up actually allowing rtg some safety overall he's still producing mutalisks though he's going to go up to an eight count at least momentarily if I'm not missing anything else, that's Medic Marine Force starting to move out. Third Hatchery is moving to the 12th clock location. Now kind of you got that counter problem where there's no ramp to protect. And these Mutalists need to engage. This is kind of the, ooh, one Mutalist going down right there. Might see a second Mutalist. I should also mention that between Peru and Germany, there's a lot of lag. Which means these Mutalists might not be as effective as they would have been otherwise. More Mutalists joining. Medics getting a little bit too, too far down. And stimming a little bit forward and having to back off as a result. We do see four barracks, a Terran factory floating, a starport being built to head towards the higher tier tech. And right now I got to give the game, RTG's doing a great job. Picked off another two Mutalisks. He's still sitting at five. Is Already has level one weapons, is working on level one armor. Lurker tech is being upgraded and is just finished, but currently... Zeddy is sitting at 24 drones overall versus the 43 comparatively. RTG, yeah, he invested a lot in turrets and bunkers and whatnot, but he's picked off a huge amount of Mulus in the interim and really has, I think because of the lag, I'm going to have to chalk this up a little bit to lag on Zeddy's part, is he's just really not doing a good job. He's having a hard time microing these Mulusks. Third creep colony going down to try to defend this. Empty mineral only. RTG's not checking that 12 o'clock location to see that third base. That third base isn't producing otherwise. So he's in a strong economic position. Is actually diving in to these turrets from the high ground. The Mutalist is engaging and might actually just completely expend. A little bit overly aggressive in my opinion. And is probably going to end up sweeping and losing this medic marine force as a result. The Mutalist, there's still enough in the air. Sorry, there's just four and a lurker. But with another wave of reinforcements, might end up losing the secondary attack force. Two lurkers... Walking up blindly, they're able to burrow, and RTG losing this. Again, I think this might be a lag death. We'll see. Factory, I love this factory floating down here in this corner, by the way. Uh, and now the Mutalisks smelling blood in the water with just the, and these medics. Are they going to be able to get away? That would be a big win. 
if these medics can sneak out. Looks like the medics, nope, all gonna get wiped out. That's a big loss. So one more control group out there and actually moving forward, RTG actually might think about keeping them because there's still that potential threat of mutalisks up in the air. He, he does have irradiate researching, but I don't, oh, actually went dropship, interesting. Getting his, so opted not to go for a first science vessel, getting a dropship instead. Mutalisks are working on that factory to the north. If he can take out that factory, uh, honestly, it's not that big a loss because I don't think that RTG is planning on building a large additional st starport uh, grouping at this stage. And he might end up losing these Mutalisks because RTG is swinging around. Mutalisks now realizing, oh, hey, there's this is a big rap here. And I, I feel like this might be an issue where Zeddy just might not be accustomed to this map and just didn't, just wasn't able to exploit the Mutalisks in the way he might have wanted to. Some lurkers moving forward. Ooh, one getting caught just in open field, unburrowed. And then this 12 o'clock base is exposed. We do have two lurkers here, but with a good commsat and again, a good drop around that back corner, might be able to kill that altogether. I like this dropship play. Just kind of swinging around using kind of the map features as a bonus rather than a attraction. And you can just see where kind of that mentality, <laughs> modern mentality uh, playing against this. The lurkers running into their own drones, trying to get into this back line. The rest of the medic marines just kind of holding this midfield. And reloading upon losing two and can just scoop them right back up. Mutalisks going to engage this dropship upon this top corner. And honestly, between these damaged Marines, I think that's going to be it for this dropship. RTG losing that. So RTG, honestly, I feel like being a little bit overly aggressive where he would win this game if he just kind of contained Zeddy with his medic Marines. If he just camped them down here and continued to expand, I feel like he would be okay and just macroed up and got a large abuse of force and then pressed when he had a little bit of a larger attack force rather than kind of forcing these drops, uh, forcing these other things. It looks like he is grabbing a mineral only now. Honestly, you could expand probably in that upper left-hand corner and probably could push through this 12 o'clock base as well, given the attack forces he has on the ground. He does have science vessels in position. He's got a sixth barrack being added on, another barracks being added on this corner. He does have his two starports. Uh, factory has uh, never been taken out, but Zeddy now has a sizable attack force to kind of engage these units. It looks like they are not quite bunched up. That might be a factor. So engaging here, taking out one creep colony, those attack forces want to make their way across. Keep in mind this is played in probably some severe lag. Two lurkers irradiated to the north, and now this 12 o'clock base completely exposed. Overlord's certainly going to die. This hatchery might get taken out. The, over the lurkers just ignoring the marines on the ground and just being delayed. Hatchery is plummeting. The Lurkers still trying to make their way forward. And again, Zed, yeah, Zeddy losing that 12 o'clock in a lot of trouble. Might be able to clean up the rest of these medics, but this is going to put him in a counter all-in situation where if he's going to win this match, he just needs to build a lot of units and try to dive in onto RTG, period, and just hope for the best from there. Medic Marines getting cleaned up otherwise, and this is where, yeah, this is where it might be scary for your RTG. Okay, he does have a lot of Marines on the ground. His medic count is somewhat low. He has plenty of science vessels. But this is where you got to expect Zeddy to turn around and go like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to build a bunch of units and attack. And it looks like he has a, size, a sizable enough bank to perhaps do that. He, had, he does have a defiler mount here in the back corner. He was able to get up the hive tech. I don't see defilers out there just yet. Has some exploratory zerglings. He's going to see this SCV waiting in that upper left-hand corner. This is still a lot of Marines, but the, the supporting medic count, because honestly the medics have been wiped out, it seems like with every grouping, has been a little bit low. So I only see two medics out in the field. This is plenty though to just, like honestly, face plant into this amount of lurkers and zerglings. The supply count, RTG double that of Zeddy. And all sorts of, wow, all sorts of science vessels. So if nothing else, RTG's macro is going to give him this match. So Defilers might be out there, but wow, this is like he can, he, when you have enough science vessels that you can just straight up irradiate every single lurker on the ground, that is not a, a good day for your Zerg opponent. Bottom right hand corner is being snuck, 12 o'clock location is being taken, but he has no ability to hold those bases. Might have Defilers, okay, he has a Defiler mound out, he has everything researched, but this is just too large, this is too large a science vessel's fleet, honestly, to deal with this. Defiler immediately getting irradiated. It seems like every lurker is probably going to get irradiated along the way. And at this stage, RTG should just walk back and let the irradiation do its work. The irradiated lurker. I like that move from Zeddy. A nice little bonus. Moving his lurker in to do some bonus irradiation damage on some of those medic marines as they're making their way across. But this is just, yeah, I don't see any scourge in the air to deal with this. Now Zeddy is getting into that camping position. 
has a handful of Marines waiting in that bottom right-hand corner to go ahead and take that base. Some Mutalists making their way out, want to try to engage these science vessels. They are finding them unprotected, but some Radiates will be able to take care of that. One science vessel down, but that's still six in the air. And Zeddy once again kind of boxed into his natural expansion. The Mutalists is getting irradiated, and that might be all she wrote. Trying to do separation. Did manage to get one out, but the others have already been severely damaged. An eraser on the Zerglings and, <laughs> and the natural expansion. A handful of Marines making their way into that 12 o'clock location as well. And while all that's happening, RTG's also taking that upper left-hand expansion. So point being, RTG's everywhere. He's staying on top of his macro. His science vessel count is huge. And Zeddy is just sitting back at half the supply. I'm almost expecting uh, kind of a latent GG some sometime and doing a nice job, yeah, containing. So the Zerg is trying to slip through as best they can. So they aren't just completely wasted. A huge fleet of Zerg, of Scourge in the air. Oh! Equalizing the science vessel count. Able to get three there. Might actually get the additional science vessels. But even then, without the science vessel uh, in the air, I still feel like Zeddy has plenty of map control, backing off with this, the rest of the Medic Marine Force, diving into that bottom right while we weren't watching there. And the 12th o'clock base has also been taken out. And there's GG from Zeddy. RTG really controlling this top to bottom. Well played on his part. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Going to quickly move on to game two so I can get in as many games as possible. Thanks for listening.